This is my one, two, three, fourth Chris Craft. I had a, a Lancer, I had a 32 foot Constellation, nice. which was wood, and that was a nightmare. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I had a 37 foot steel roamer, which was less of a nightmare, but still a nightmare. Got rid of that one and decided I'm going fiberglass next time because the maintenance is so much better. This is my fourth one, which is the Commander. It's a 1971 uh, 47 foot Commander. It's got Detroit Diesel 8V53s. Wow which are kind of a rare one as far as Detroit's go. It's the smallest of their large block diesels. You know, they're naturals, so they'll go, you know, five, 10,000 hours really without major problems. The turbocharged ones you get less life out of. Bought this about five years ago and we spent the rest of the time restoring it. I rebuilt both engines, I put a new generator in, I've done new electronics, uh, need some paint touch-up work. It's always something. I bought this in Miami, and so bringing it up here was, was uh, really frustrating, actually. The first three days were just bridges. They're not synced up, and they all are just, they open either on the half hour or on the hour. You'll get to the next one just in time to wait another hour. And that happens, you know, for the first, I'd say, 100 miles of the trip in 80 miles, something like that. Once you get north of Palm Beach, like almost to Fort Pierce, you have your last drawbridge. And after that, they're all high-rise bridges. It was uh, five days of which three and a half were just bridges in South Florida. But I had nothing but problems, too. I lost an engine. Like, I had an oil line that blew underway. By the time I noticed it, like, I'd already damaged the engine. I rebuilt both of them. So new pistons, new liners, new uh, rods, new valves, new everything. Every, every moving part in the engine except for, I want to say the camshafts and the crankshaft look brand new, so I didn't change those. So that happened, and then after I rebuilt the first one, it made more power than the other one. And so then I ended up redoing the second one. It's like a seven, eight month process. We always want a bigger boat. As soon as you buy a bigger one, you fill it up with more crap, and then you want a bigger one. It's really expensive to do what I did and start with a smaller one, then get a slightly bigger one and a slightly bigger one. By the time you're done with it, and you bring all of those up to the condition you want them to be in, you've spent an almighty like fortune that's like depressing to think about. Oh, so yeah. just buy your first boat last. Skip the four or five in between and you'll save so much money. The bigger the boat, the easier it is to drive, especially with twin engines. Like if you had a little 20 footer, it actually is more difficult to dock. Uh, than, than this is. Really? You can control these very precisely. Once you get up to about 40,000 pounds in weight, the boat tends to just sit there until you use the engines to move it. Mm -hmm. You know, current and wind have less effect, although they still have an effect. And then, you know, part two is twin engines. I mean, you can maneuver that thing. Oh, autopilot. Absolutely the best money I've spent on the boat. You know, I don't have to be at the wheel the entire time if I don't want to be, which is fantastic. It'll actually auto route for you if you want it to plot your course out and it'll follow the course the whole way to where you're going. I'm going to go to Key West, the, you know, probably the Bahamas. You know, I'd like Fort Pierce or Palm Beach and then cross over and it's, uh, it's a day. It can get a little rough, but you know, once you're there, it's nice. And I can't think anywhere else you can go in that amount of time or distance that's, that's cool in a foreign country and it's just yeah. nice. It's really versatile. You know, I use it for everything. Birthday parties, you know, just hanging out with friends, going out to dinner, you go to the river and just cut the engines and float. Thank you so much, Chris. This has been amazing. No, thank you for Every coming. Every second I spend on this boat is <laughs> like in another dimension. It's so great. So let's get out on the water. Let's get cruising. All right, 10-4. Let's do it. All right.
Big thanks to Chris for letting me tell the story of his beautiful commander. I hope that my Corinthian can be as beautiful one day. If you like this video, feel free to stick around for more adventures. I make them every weekend. And can you guess how old Chris was when he got his first boat, or the one model he wishes he could have owned? You can watch the full interview with the link below. Thanks for watching!